let's talk about Josh Allen. Sorry, we just got done recording the Brian Dable episode, so excuse me if I'm a little spicy. Let's talk about Josh Allen. No. In a world where sports is going to multiple platforms, be sure to check out Hashtag Sports on Sportscaster and YouTube. Josh Allen has a lot of great attributes, right? He's got a lot of great skills that you can't teach somebody. He's a great kid. I think he can rally a team around him, right? I think he can... I think he's quick enough to process what's happening in front of him when when put in the right situations. Yes. Right? Um, You should not be asking to read five wide sets because you're just wasting your time. Just eliminate half the field. They are. Right. And that's exactly what they're doing well, right he's now. Not, he's, only, he's only reading half the field with 5-1. Right. right. And, um, yeah, he's only he's only making it through half the field. He's running when he's not seeing anything. No, what I'm saying is that they're not asking him to read the whole field. No. So no, they're, they're, not. they're giving him they're giving five wide. They're giving him half the field. Right. Yeah. Well, they're mirror routes when they're running five wide anyway. So it's not hard to you just snap. Safety. Safety's going left. Oh, I'm going to just look right here. That's so frustrating. It's not hard to know where, where he's going to go. Just watch the safety. And as soon as the safety moves one way, you're like, oh, okay, we're just going to go this way. They had a five-wide set. And and they did this a lot in the Titans game. Well, yeah, let's preface this. So you you spent some time breaking down uh, breaking down the film and kind of looking at some of the finer details of, it's so of what beautiful. this offense looks like. Can right? I tell you? Can I, can I, let me just preface this, though. I was, a, uh, I was a coach for a number of years. And... If you think of something that you've done for a prolonged period of time that just becomes second nature to you, that when you when you end up doing that action again, you know, people like to use the uh, you know, like, analogy yeah, of riding, like riding, riding a, bike. a bike. Okay, yeah. it's like riding a bike. Okay, all right. However, I mean, I had to stay up till wee hours of the morning breaking down film, doing cut-ups, doing a bunch of stuff when I was coaching. And it was, as frustrating as it was, I learned so much about the entire scope of the game. Now, I, I have a serious question to ask you. Sure. Were you as bad at uh, breaking down film as I was at riding a bike? Because I didn't learn to ride a bike till I was 14. I was probably a little better. Just a little bit? No, I... I'm sorry for your family. Well, here's, here's, here's basically what it happened. So, if you're watching a game with somebody and you have a good time, you're watching a football game, you watch it, okay, the Bills are on offense, okay? They come up to the line, Allen's calling the cadence, and they snap the ball. You know what's going through my head the entire time that that's going on? Okay, they're in a three by one set. Defense is in a four three. It looks like the corner's going to come off the edge. Yeah, you can't passively watch a game anymore. I can't. Anymore. I never do it. And, no. and I used hard. to watch it's the hard. game with my brother a lot, who's been on the show many times. He's he's even magnified that. Yeah. So he, he's even ten times even ten times more than I do. So that's what's going through my head each play. That's why it's hard to watch a game with any kind of enjoyment at this point. That being said. Breaking up film, breaking down film, is so much fun to do because I'm so used to doing it, I get in the rhythm of it. That being said, that little story, I got a chance to watch the Titans game. It took me a half hour to break down all of the offensive plays for Josh Allen. It doesn't take long. No, it doesn't take long. I think it's because I've done it so many times. But this, and I got the clicker, and all these other it goes back and forth like six or seven times because I was like, I go by position. And then when I have the tight, there's a wide shot and a tight shot. The wide shot is usually what you guys watch during the games. But you don't see the receivers running down the field. That's right. the only thing. And then the tight is the film from the end zone and it just gives you the linemen and what they're doing, which is I love that film even ten times better. Because so, so I rewind it five, six times to see what all the linemen do. And I'm saying, okay, wait, what happened here? What was the play? Okay. That being said, there were a lot of times in the Titans game where guys were open. Allen didn't hit them. As well as he played in the Titans game. He did not hit them. Yep. There were also times where he would wait until they were open, and then they didn't. They weren't open again. So that tells me that in the games that he's come into to, to, to that point, now I'll have to watch the Dolphins game, he is not progressing the way he should be progressing. Now, is he in his second year? Understandable. Could that some of that be on Dable? Could some of that be on Dorsey? Guy we haven't mentioned in a while. But that being said, he's missing open 
guys. Mm-hmm. Is he going to hit every open guy? No. He's still young. Mm-hmm. I can give him that. I yep. can give him a little bit of a leash on that. However, by next season, he better be hitting all those open guys. Mm-hmm. I, I, if Dable's still here, and that's the offense that they're going to want to run, he better hit those guys. This is not good. This is not a good thing. I saw I saw too many open open guys. As well as he played, there were still open guys on the field. In the Miami game, he took Allen took a shotgun snap, right? It was a four wide set. He was in shotgun. I think it was uh, Singletary and in, in offset to his right. Um, and he threw it to Knox over the middle. But he threw it to Knox over the middle with a guy trailing in coverage, a safety coming down, and a linebacker in the passing lane. Right? Throws it to Knox over the middle. The other one he dropped? Uh, Might have been. Okay. In frame the whole time is Isaiah McKenzie, who ran a nine-yard curl route that literally nobody covered. Total blown coverage. Nobody covered, right? The linebacker was the linebacker that was supposed to cover him shaded to the middle in zone, right? McKenzie ran a little hook route. There was nobody within seven yards of him. And what did Allen do? But he threw it a, he threw a passing lane with a linebacker that dropped into a trailing corner, and as the safety was coming down. I don't blame he, he Knox threw, for looking. He threw, if that's the one that he dropped, I don't think it was. I think that was the, the – Knox had two receptions. I think that was I think that was the one for nine yards. Okay. Because usually Knox is running a clearing route down the middle of the field. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, I mean, that being said, to get back to the, the original discussion we were talking about, when they go five wide, mm-hmm. you know, we had this discussion in the post game. We talked about it all the time. When they go five wide, that's to try to give Alma a little bit of a tip off of what the coverage is. That's number one. Number two, when they spread the, the, the running back out wide, a lot of times – He'll take one step and come back and just right. hold his hands up. Yep. Um, if I can get a screenshot, if oh, I can show dude. you. There was a play. I know exactly the play you're going to talk about. In the there Titans a, game? Mm-hmm. Or to our my, my, my game? Yeah, in the Titans game. Okay. It happened again today. There was a play. It was Singletary that was that was wide. Um, okay. From the, frame to the, from the frame from the Miami game, Singletary is wide all the way down. And uh, if I'm Allen, because they, they had Singletary covered off 10 yards. There was nobody there. Yeah. yeah. They had yeah. Singletary off Do you know yards. why? Tell me. In the Titans game, Yeldon was there. Mm-hmm. I remember that. And Gore was there. Yep. They played him off about 12 yards. Mm-hmm. He took one step, stood there. Yep. And it was, and this is why I, I say that they're using those formations to try to help Allen with the reads mm-hmm. because all they do is have four other guys in the route. Right. So they're running what they did on, on the one. You have Gore, two receivers. And then two receivers on the other side. Okay. If I could put a screenshot up here for you guys, I, I will. But if I can't, let me just describe it the way it is now. They would have the outside guy would run a streak that was inside of Gore. Right. Gore would do that one or yell and do that one and done. Um, so the, the inside, the middle receiver would run a streak. Beasley would run across the formation. Mm-hmm. He'd run like a 10-yard dig. Mm-hmm. Uh, the slot guy who was brown mm-hmm. would run a 15-yard out. Right. And then the outside receiver on the side where Brown was would just run a streak. Right. So you had two streaks. The middle of the guys were running two outs. Yep. Very easy to read. Mm-hmm. Very easy to you know to diagnose what's going on. Right. Because you're looking at levels there. You're looking at linebacker levels on those on those on the out and on the crosser. Right. So that you're just looking at linebacker levels. You're seeing where the linebackers are going. Yeah. So what you're trying to do is you're trying to gain. Now the only read that Allen has to make is. The linebacker. Yeah, that's it. You just got to see where he's going. So if you look off, if he's covered Beasley, throw it to Brown. If you're covering Brown, throw it to Beasley. Mm-hmm. That's all you do. Yeah. That's all you got to do on that play. But there was a play where Yeldon caught the pass for one yard for a one-yard gain. He was wide open. Yep. Right off the line. Boom, boom. Mm-hmm. I guarantee you if he throws three or four of those a game, number yep. one, his completion percentage will go up. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Number two... You're going to force teams to have to cover that guy because right. we've already seen in one week or two weeks right. that he never throws it. They don't bother covering it. No, they don't. teams don't. And that's the thing, right? So if you're going to drop Singletary, Gore, or Yeldon down on that wide, on the, in that five wide, you're absolutely right. Teams don't even bother covering it. That's why I play them off 12 yards. They're like, go ahead, you're not going to throw it there. And all they're doing is they're just – because they know that two of the receivers on that side, one of them's – one of them is probably running a route longer than right, seven actually, yards. Yeah. So that's the guy that's going to be covering. Which that. effectively kills the reason why you're running five wide Exactly, in the first place. exactly. Because you're it's you're turning the numbers game against you, right? Yes. You're taking, a, now it's 11 defenders on 10 offensive players. Nine, you got Allen. 
Like, like, well, you're yeah. not running. Like yeah, sometimes you'll run, but I understand. But you, you're basically you're effectively taking, like you said, you're taking a guy out of the route. Now, if you throw to him, if it's Gore, if Yeldon's activated, or if it's Singletary, they threw it to Demarco. Yeah. They threw it to Demarco today, but that was a quick out. That wasn't really a. But, that wasn't yeah. That wasn't a screen. But that yeah, was, yeah. But the point being is this: but if he that, just takes but, it and throws it to him, three three or four times, you're gonna have a guy come up. Now, what does that mean if a guy comes up to play that running back, whoever it is? Number one, you're gonna be able to disguise. You're gonna have, diagnose what the coverage is. Mm-hmm. That's one. Two, you could have your middle receiver on the three receiver side where the where the running back is over there. Have him run something to the outside. Mm-hmm. Right now, it's cut off because he's playing 12 yards back. You can't run any routes nope. over there. Nope, sure can't. And Allen has the arm strength to throw it over there. Sure so does. So why not? Well, and I guess that's something that I kind of appreciate a little bit in the Miami game was the fact that while it was while Demarco was just running a flat route, Allen threw it there, and and the Bills really haven't thrown to their running backs effectively in the flats at all this season. Mm-hmm. They haven't used them at all. So to throw to Demarco, that's something that you put on film, and teams are like, okay. Well, man, it's probably a one-off, right? And then they threw a screen pass to Gore. They're like, oh, Ooh, that okay, nice. that was like, that oh, was... I we were just joking on the Saturday morning sports cast to show. Well, if Gore's out there, you know, you're not throwing a screen. We we had a hearty chuckle about that on Saturday. Yeah, and look at what happened. And they and so they great. go out there and they threw a screen pass to Gore, and it was effective, they right? Throw more of those. But why is it effective? Because you have teams don't anticipate you doing it tendencies. because tendencies. yeah, it's a tendency issue. One of the best things you can do is be a team that doesn't have tendencies. Not run plays because they're against your tendencies. The best thing to do is to be a team that doesn't have them. Well, speaking of tendencies, the defense for any opponent that the Bills play now, if it's a third and you're, you know, you're, you're, you're behind schedule, mm-hmm. and I've said that many times on episodes, what I mean behind schedule is you're, not, you're more than five at that point. Yeah. You, know, you don't want to be more than five. Third and five. So yeah. if you're third yeah. and seven, third and eight, you're behind schedule. Right. Which means you're, you're not in the most favorable uh, opportunity to get a first down. Right. So if you're in, if you're third and behind schedule, every team is bringing the heat. Oh, yeah. You Absolutely. have to know that. Why yeah. aren't more screens run on third and seven? Or a draw. Well, I don't... You know, run well, a draw for crying out loud. I don't know, Omar. Like, they, they brought eight on Allen a few times on third downs and against Miami, and it was... But here's my point, and this could probably goes back to the, the Dable episode that we talked about. Here's my point. If, if you know that teams have that in their playbook mm-hmm. for a young quarterback, whole new offensive line, you're still, you're still trying to get everything on the same page. If you know that, if you're in a third, you're behind schedule, a third and long, you know they're going to bring pressure. You can diagnose plays against that pressure, mm-hmm. which another thing in the Titan game that bothered me because when they used to bring, when they were bringing heat off the corner, mm-hmm. Beasley and Brown both read that and ran hot routes. Yeah, Allen didn't hit him. He either tried to run around, or he got sacked. Yep. He's not. He's not doing that. So, as much as I love the physical tools of this kid. Things you can't coach, the things you can coach are not being coached to him, or he's not getting it. I'm not in the I'm not in the film room with him. I'm yeah. not I'm not coaching him. No, I'm, I'm not glad, part I'm of glad the you team. said that. I'm glad you said that but because it's not. You, we can't in I we can infer can't we yeah. can infer that because of the personality of Josh Allen that we believe like he would be yeah. a coachable person. Yes. Right. Yeah. But I, just I because he's so. a coachable personality doesn't mean that he's going to understand what you're teaching him. Right. Yes. But, yes, but so. that's part of your job as a coordinator, as a quarterback's coach, is to be able to translate to whatever language he needs to be effective. Mm-hmm. And they and and you would think that by year two of Brian Dable being there, like he would learn the language by now. The, and it's not there. The system that he's running is heavily predicated on the quarterback, more so than any other system in the NFL. Right. That's dangerous that's, for a young quarterback. That's the... That's the book on that system that they're running right now, that Dable's trying to implement. That is the book on it. It's so heavily predicated on the quarterback. Now, you have a young quarterback in there. The learning curve is very steep. Mm -hmm. Like I said, and and thank you for bringing that up, I don't know what is going – who is to blame on certain things. But if I see Allen miss a throw to the left – now, was it schemed up that Dable didn't account for them blitzing on that certain down? Or was it just that Allen missed the read? I don't know. Yeah. All well, I know is what I see on the film. Well, and let's talk about that just for a brief second. So I think there's kind of a misnomer. Uh, we see these Microsoft Surface tablets, right? And you see yeah, the guys yeah, talking yeah. about it. Now, 
here's the NFL does not allow you to use video on those surface tablets. So you cannot show video of current plays. There's still shots. There's still shots, yeah. right? But you can bring up video of previous games, right? So just as an example, let's say the Bills run the same offensive play against the Titans in Miami. Mm -hmm. You could talk about why the play wasn't successful against the Titans and then what Miami did in still shots on the sideline. Mm -hmm. So you can look at video from previous games. You just can't look at video of a current game. You only get still shots. So do you think that is something that, um, do you think that makes a difference while they're trying to get Allen on the same page on the sidelines? I think it makes a huge difference, but you got to realize that the other sideline has those things too. Right. And they're getting coached up. Right. So unless you're ahead of the curve, mm -hmm. you're still going to get that play stuffed. So if you, if let's say the Titans brought a weak side blitz on Allen, he misses the read for the hot route. Okay. Miami does the same thing. Mm -hmm. Beasley doesn't run the hot route. Mm -hmm. Allen's, oh, and then he goes down. Yeah. Okay. Now, that is easily correctable because you could say, listen, he missed he missed this. But now on the other sideline, what they're saying is you have to account for that hot route, hot route by Beasley because the next time if he blitz again, he's yeah, going to do that. The next so time then you see a linebacker that. in that lane. Mm -hmm. So what does that have to do? Dable has to take it a step further and say, listen, if they're going to it's going to be third and long and they're going to blitz off this corner, I want to put another guy coming across the middle. Right. So when that linebacker vacates that zone, we have a linebacker. We have a tight end going right across the middle. Right. So that's the chess game that has to go on that I don't see, at least on the surface from Dable. Mm -hmm. and, and and Allen's progressions through certain plays is not there. So that's that's the only thing that's very concerning to me. But like I said before, these are my opinions just from watching football for so long. Mm -hmm. I'm not in the room with Allen. I'm right. not in the room with Dable or Dorsey. Right. I don't know what their goal is. Mm -hmm. All I know is the system they're trying to run and the, the game within a game that has right. to happen on the field. Right. It, it, there's there's a book on the philosophy of that system, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So you understand the framework of what they would like to do. But again, every system is a little bit different. Just because that's the framework of the system that you like to run doesn't mean that that's necessarily exactly their expectation. Yeah, they could have results. some West Coast plays. They could have right. some Air Coriel. They could have some... Um, uh, certain plays that Dable ran at Alabama that he happens to those double tight ends. You know what I saw that was. Side, you know what I saw that was really fascinating today. Yeah. So the Bills got to the line and they called an audible once the formation was out from the sideline. Did you see that against Miami? I may have missed it. Yeah, it absolutely happened. So the Bills get to the line. It was they were in two by two sets, right? Mm -hmm. And Dable called an audible from the sideline. And the whole team stepped back and looked, just like the Rams did all last season, mm. where McVay was calling audibles once he saw the defensive formations. Dable took that out of uh, Allen's hands, but I think it was—I think it's when the Bills were trailing. That's an interesting thing. That I'm going to take a look at to see how many times he comes up and checks because I guarantee in the, in the you, when they're, saw, when they're behind, man, he's not making checks. In the, no, in the film that it. I saw, a lot of film that I saw. I think if I'm a defensive coordinator mm -hmm. and or a defensive player playing against Allen, I could tell you if it's pass or run when he comes up to the line. Yeah, I, I think it. I think the offense is pretty predictable he, he in that tend, respect. He t now, is that on Allen or Dable? Here's my point. you got to be an actor, too. Mm -hmm. Okay? you could. You, I could come up to the line and be like, John, yeah. John, you got him. You got him. Like, it's a run play, but right. we're passing. You know what right. I mean? If Allen's coming straight up to the line, he's not really scanning the defense very much. Mm -hmm. He's going to hand it off. If he's come up to the line, he's like checking, looking around, doing all this stuff. Mm -hmm. Okay, I doubt this is going to be a run. I'm going to play the run because I'm a linebacker, but I'm also going to try to get to my zone as fast as possible. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's 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 sleight of hand. It's a couple of things, but you know, a lot of it is. I'm not seeing the progression, and I know. I'm being greedy here because he's world better than he was last year. Oh with this. yeah, absolutely. I guess yeah. I just I'm like every other impatient Bills fan where I want to see it happen faster. Sure. And sure. is that wrong? No. That oh wrong? God, no. I but want, I want a superstar here. You know there, what I mean? Yeah. I mean, when you invest the pick in it like that, Mar, that's not wrong at all. But I, the level of ex expectation is reasonable, and the reason it's reasonable is because you're also five and one right now. Yeah, and you get blindsided by the talent of this kid. He's a good kid. He missed throwing the ball out of the, out of the stadium by eight rows. That's disgusting to me. That's disgusting. I had well, to throw, I, he I, had saw, a, I had to throw it up. I'm kidding. 
I've seen you throw a football in that stadium. Trust me, out is not one of the options. <laughs> I've seen you drop a football in that stadium. <laughs> Turf's very bouncy. I understand why Zay liked it so much. <laughs> it's like playing basketball. Jesus. The guy's not even here anymore. You still beat The body's him up. not even cold. It's not even cold. He was inactive today, by the way. Yeah. Even when he's active, he's inactive. I was waiting for it. <laughs> <laughs>